In this video, we're going to look a bit closer at the behavior of the mass property analysis, specifically how it relates to priority as a bit of a review, and looking at how your thin surface density can have an effect or not, depending on how the components are placed. Now, this simple demonstration is the same one that we used in the general components back in chapter one, but it warrants a simple demo like this so that you really get the concept before we move on to something big like a transport aircraft with a bunch of internal seats and tanks, etc. So we'll have our internal sphere here on the inside, and let's give this a density of something like 10 and a higher priority than this external sphere. So everything looks good there. And we'll go ahead and run our uh, analysis with, let's let it go quickly and do like 20 um, and compute. And so all it's got to do is perform the analysis. You can see that the intersections of the slices are here. So you notice we do have the boundaries of the internal sphere included and everything worked pretty much how it was expected to. And the center of gravity is kind of smack on the inside, right as it should be. And so because we had a high density sphere inside of a larger low density sphere, we do have a higher total mass because our internal sphere had a higher priority. Let's delete this, show our spheres again, come into the internal sphere. And what we're gonna do this time is just bring that priority down to zero. So now these are equivalently equal. Let's compute this again. And notice that it completely ignored the density of the internal sphere because once they're on the same level of priority, anything that's inside this volume is given the density of the parent. Now, it, that doesn't mean that the intersection isn't performed, it's all right there. It's just the, the surface weight of each of these slices is set to be inside of the, the external volume. And so it gets overridden. And so that is why priority is important when you're dealing with complex models where you have overlapping internal components, you need to use some design intent as to what is passing through what. So for example, if you have a wing that's passing through a fuselage and you intend the majority of the structural weight or mass weight of that wing to take priority to something like a fuselage as more of a shell, then you need to set that priority accordingly. Now, something else that I want to reiterate from the general component demo is that thin surface density within these components is not applied when you're inside something else. So the algorithm doesn't handle that well right now because it doesn't particularly easily handle the intersections and then apply a mass per area or a mass per line weight on, in that case. So let's see what happens. Let's set the priority back to one, our density to 10, so we had somewhere in the neighborhood of 20. We'll turn on thin shell mass and give it something ridiculous like a hundred mass units per area of this internal sphere. The mass should go up considerably. Let's watch what happens. Once again, we're right at about 20. So that's just a proof that any thin shell or thin surface area on the on inside another component is not going to be computed, at least as is. Now, the way to get around that, if you have a complex model and you do want internal components with their own thin surface mass and density mass, so think of something like a fuel tank in a wing or a volume where the external part of it is something like, say, aluminum or some material, and the inside is fuel. Those are two different densities, and you want that to be calculated accordingly. The way you can do that is to perform the mass buildup manually step by step. And so you would perform the mass buildup of the fuel tanks or the internal components as their own separate set, and then recompute the next level up, and then again, up until you have the whole aircraft. And that's how you can perform a more accurate mass buildup using this tool by being just a little bit more rigorous and making sure that you're accounting for things appropriately. So yes, it does require a little bit more work, but it can be done. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an overview on how to execute the analysis and mass properties, as well as a few of the pitfalls that you might run into whenever you're running these analyses.